Welcome back TCS viewers, it's Chris Nichols here from the camera store and today we're playing with the brand new Leica Q. Now at first glance, this camera might just be the ultimate street camera. So we're out on the streets, we're gonna do some street photography with this camera today and see how it performs. Now, of course, it is a true Leica, it's gonna be expensive, but do we have enough here to justify that high cost? We've got a fixed lens, 28 mil focal length, we've got a big 24 megapixel full frame sensor, it could be an amazing picture taker. We're gonna take it out and see if it can perform. Well, we got nice shot here. Classic specular highlights, sun through the trees. Shoot at F16. And there's our big star pattern right there. Now the Leica Q certainly does have a lot of the Leica brand pedigree and I mention that because you have to remember this is still a combined project between Panasonic and Leica. You got a Panasonic battery in here, in fact we charged it today in a Panasonic charger and you know there's going to be a lot of stuff inside that's also borrowed from that company. However, what I like about this camera is it's not just a rebranded Panasonic camera, this is its own camera. The Leica T, I liked it, it was a lot of fun, but it wasn't very popular, but this is very reminiscent of an M camera and it has enough uniqueness to make it its own kind of genre. From the start of it here, playing with the dials, the focusing rings, the overall build and fit and finish, it's very high end. You feel like you're getting a very expensive camera here. Now, of course, one of the obvious differences is it's not a Leica M camera, there's no range finder, it is mirrorless, and we're relying on electric viewfinders and screens. Now first, the main EVF, 3.6 million dots, that's huge resolution, great magnification and great eye relief. So using this viewfinder, it's a joy, it's bright and it's sharp. The back screen's not bad either, but of course no articulation. However, I am noticing something interesting and somewhat awkward. Now you got your center button here on the joypad, and what this is going to do on the Leica Q is navigate through your display options. But it is a little bit strange here. If I keep pushing, I'm going to get a full view. Great, I can get my full composition, but when I touch the shutter, I get this grayed out portion at the bottom showing me shutter speed metering and so on. Okay, push the button again and I get a heads up display with all of my settings and all of my details at the bottom. But it's very easy to think that you're now cropping the frame. You've got this dark viewpoint and the fact is you can barely see through this almost opaque layer on the bottom and top, but that is going to be part of your photos. So don't get fooled by thinking you're getting a tighter crop. You're not. And if you shoot that way and compose, you're actually going to get more. Touch the shutter and I can see most of my composition. If I push it again here, I go into a movie preview. Here I can see the widescreen and so that's the only accurate rendition of frame lines. Otherwise, you gotta be careful. You're always gonna have this information and it could trick you in critical shooting. Now when I would do street photography, I would usually prefer something like a 50 millimeter lens for normal range. The 28 here is a really interesting sense of perspective, but you are gonna have to get close, right into people's faces to get that full range and depth. That means you want a discrete camera, and the Leica Q is fantastic for that. Now first off, very quiet shutter, check this out. Almost no noise, nobody's gonna hear it. You can cover up that Leica dot and then it's just very simple and very plain and black. The other thing I love here, the autofocusing dial. I've got a little button on the dial, I can click it and I'm out of autofocus into manual focus just like that and it's buttery smooth. And frankly, you don't even have to push the button. Give it a little bit of force and it seems to click right in and out. Now you've also got hyperfocal marks right on the lens here. Set your aperture to f8 or f11 with that 28 mil lens and you can get grab shots with tons of depth of field and not even have to worry about focusing, shooting from the hip. So overall, this camera is designed to be very quiet, very discreet. They did a good job that way. So one of the very slick and interesting features on the Leica Q is its macro capability with this wide angle lens. We're getting under half a foot. And the first thing I'm impressed by is when I go into macro mode, our distance scale, our manual focusing scale, gives us a very nice change, shows us our close up capabilities. But even more impressive is that the autofocus, which has already been so fantastic today, works amazing even at these close ranges. I've got a honeybee right here in front of me. Bam, and I can catch it nice and quick. Uh, really very impressive. 
Now, of course, a good street camera has to have classic dials, and the Leica Q won't disappoint. Aperture ring here from 1.7 to f16 in third stop click stop, so that's nice. Click it to auto, and it's in auto, shutter priority mode. Now, of course, on the shutter speed dial, we've got everything from one second to two thousandth of a second. Now, they're in full stop increments. However, you can always turn the back dial and get your third stop increments. What else is interesting is if you're at two thousandth of a second and then you keep going, you'll notice your shutter speed goes up to sixteen thousandth of a second. Well, that means you're now in electronic shutter territory. Nice to cut some extra light, but rolling shutter will be an issue. The only thing I really have issue with in this whole control scheme then is with the ISO. That is in full stop increments and you know this camera is pretty good in low light as you're going to see but it does have a pretty harsh curve and if we're up in those high ISOs it'd be nice to tweak that a little bit to third stops just to you know get a little bit more light without too much more noise. Still it's a minor complaint overall ergonomically fantastic. Now there's something I wish that would have been a little bit different about the Leica Q. We have a customizable function button here on the back, but you can only customize to do one thing. And especially with the touchscreen interface, they could have made it more uh, multifunctional, you know, bring up a quick menu and then from that you could choose things. I actually really like that about the Leica T. The only other custom button you have here is on the back right under the, the shutter speed dial. Now this is also very limiting. This does either autofocus or auto exposure lock, or it's your crop mode. Now with the crop mode, this is kind of interesting. Remember, we got a 24 megapixel sensor, 28 millimeter focal length. But if I push this button once, I get 35 millimeter frame lines. When I push it again, I get 50. And here you can see examples of pictures I've taken at those three different ranges. Now, I guess this is handy if you want to compose that way. But remember, it is just a digital crop. I don't like it. I'm not going to use it. I'm going to shoot everything 28. If I want to crop it later, I can crop it later. You know, I'd rather have that freedom because otherwise it's permanent. If you are going to use it, I recommend shooting JPEG and RAW. The DNG file will not be touched by the crop. That way you've got your preview, but if you don't like it, you could do something else. You're actually getting a really fast burst rate on the Leica Q. 10 frames per second. Again, great thing about mirrorless cameras. And the buffer's not bad. I'd say shooting RAW and JPEG at the same time, I'm getting about 13 shots in a row. You know, a second and a half of shooting. Go just to JPEG and it goes on for three, three and a half seconds. Now, you're not going to do a great job shooting sports or action, but certainly journalistic kind of stuff or on the street like this, it's fantastic. So, very well suited. I can get my grab shots. Unless I'm really machine gunning it, trying to get as many people as possible without them knowing, I'm going to be really pleased with this buffer rate. Now, touch screen is something like us tried to incorporate again, and I don't know, it works okay on the Leica Q. You kind of have to learn a few combinations, just like on the T series. If I touch the screen and pull slowly downwards, it'll automatically take me to playback, and I can, of course, scroll left and right to see my photos. That works well enough. But the touch screen can also be used for the autofocus. You can touch on the screen and it will go where your finger goes. However, you have to go into the menu to find that. You know, I'd like to have a quick button just to get to touch autofocus or even a command on screen. Get to that touch autofocus and do it quickly because on the street I don't have time to mess around with that. I'm finding I'm just using the center spot focusing more than anything else. And on that same token, when I go to manual focus, I can only zoom in to get an assist through the center. If I've got touch screen, it'd be great to be able to move a box around like Panasonic cameras can and choose exactly where I want to zoom in. So, not perfect, but it does work. It does help. I actually really like this divot here in the back of the camera for your thumb. It's actually quite comfortable. It's a slippery camera, I guess insofar as there's no grips or contours or anything, but the front leatherette's got a nice textured pattern to it. And again, your thumb locks in there really nicely. This back dial, it's right there. I will say this, it's actually easy to hit and it's easy to turn, but they did something smart. It's your exposure compensation when you're not setting other things. And yet, if you turn it one click, it doesn't do anything except activate the menu for exposure comp. You then have to keep clicking on purpose to make it go over or under. So when you're purposefully trying to change it, it's gonna work great. But if you accidentally touch it, it's not gonna mess you up. All right, now f1.7 on this lens, even though it's a 28 mil, close like this, we're gonna get beautiful bokeh and lots of out of focus areas here. However, an interesting thing, if I wanna get closer to this plant, I gotta go into macro mode. Now, of course, like any good macro lens, we're gonna lose some light, and I'm now at 2.8. Now, if it is somewhere buried in this camera, forgive me, but I'm looking through this menu and I'm not finding anywhere to turn off the electronic shutter option. Now, 
What this means is if I'm shooting wide open like right now and there's still got some light here and I'm getting over two thousandth of a second, my camera's automatically into electronic shutter mode. Now check that out. I'm going to get rolling shutter here. Focus on this light standard, shift the camera, bam. I can make this thing bend literally to my will. It looks ridiculous and if I'm doing tracking shots, following people, I can expect to get some strange verticals. So I would like to have an option to just shut that off have the camera stop at 2,000th of a second and let me make adjustments like ND filters or lower my ISO or, you know, stop down my aperture a bit. There are some other interesting features on the Leica Q. 28mm lens, 1.7 Sumalux, it's beautiful. Brilliant optically, great wide open, focuses well, so I've been really happy with that. Image stabilized too, of course, and that's really nice to have here, especially with this heavy body and light shutter. We're getting very good shots at slow shutter speeds. The shutter itself, 500th of a second maximum flash sync, so that can be useful as well. Wi-Fi is incorporated now on the Leica Q, which is great. All cameras have Wi-Fi, but now this is no exception. Other cool thing here is the hidden menu. It'll actually tell you your shutter count, any error codes have been generated, all sorts of things about the camera firmware version, but it's a nice sort of info display. Now the sensor that we got in the Leica Q, 24 megapixel full frame, no aliasing filter. To be expected, it's a very sharp sensor. Now we're also gonna get that unique look that Leica delivers. The processing engine gives us an organic feel, beautiful color. Every time I use a Leica camera, I recognize the look of the photos. So that's really nice, it's distinct. Now we did a resolution test here as well between the Sony A7 Mark II and a Leica M240. That had the Leica 28mm f2 and the Sony A7's got their FE 28mm f2 and of course we've got our Sumalux here on this camera. Now looking at the resolution, to be expected, the Sony's not as sharp. It's got an aliasing filter, that's going to hurt it. However, between the 240 and the Leica Q, it was hard to tell much difference. I'm actually going to give the edge to the 240, even though it's not using a purpose-built lens for its own sensor, but uh, really, very interchangeable. And you got to think about the cost of the Leica M240, way higher than this puppy. So this delivers a beautiful combination of sharpness and color. Now for high ISO, what I did was I tested the Leica Q against the Nikon D750, a proven performer, and also the Sony A7 Mark II, great low light performance. Now, at first I was very scared for the Leica Q because it looked way, way worse. But then I realized I was shooting JPEGs. And so just a side point here, the Leica JPEGs in the Q, they're not very good. In fact, they're absolute so really shoot DNG, you're gonna want them, okay? You get way better results. So take a look at the comparisons here. And as you look at high ISO between the three, the Leica Q sensor is actually performing very, very similarly. I'd have to give us an edge to the Nikon D750, just slightly. You know, Leica's usually had problems with this in the past, and I'm happy to see that they fixed those problems. Hey guys, it's Jordan, the video guy, and I'm gonna talk about something I rarely do, a Leica. Uh, but on paper, the Q specs actually look really interesting. You're getting 1080, 30, 60p, has peaking. You, know, you can adjust the uh, color contrast. It seems like a little more video-centric camera. Uh, and looking at the image, you know, it's, it's a little bit soft. It's not ideal. Uh, the 60p footage is fairly nice, uh, but I do wish there was 24. I mean, that has been a frame rate for, you know, 100 years or so. It's kind of been a standard. It'd be great to see that on a classic camera like this. But the big thing is there's no manual exposure control. So you're gonna see fast shutter speeds all the time. You're gonna be your exposure shifting regularly when someone walks by with a white t-shirt. It's not usable for a professional. I'd say it's barely usable for an enthusiast. Might be okay for the odd quick snap of video, but I don't know, for a $5,000 camera, I'm pretty underwhelmed. You know, the Leica X Vario was just the, the absolute worst. And the Leica T, I really loved using it, but it left a lot to be desired. The Leica Q, their third letter in the alphabet, uh, it's on the money. This is really made very well. It focuses quick. I like the image quality. The lens is beautiful, and it really is made for shooting on the street. This is the kind of camera that you want to have on your shoulder, walking around, taking casual pictures. Now, granted, it is a very expensive camera, absolutely. I mean, well over five grand, but it looks like a Leica, and when you wear it, it feels like you're wearing a Leica M, and that's part of the appeal, let's be honest. Overall, though, although it has some quirks, you know, strange menus, and I, I wish there were some more custom functions, it just handles like such a classic camera. Great dials, great feel, great manual focus, and overall, it's very, very functional, and that's not something that can be said for all Leica cameras. 
About the only things I can really complain about on the Leica Q are the video mode, but we weren't surprised by that. We knew it wouldn't be very effective. And some of the features seem a little bit half-hearted or not thought out well. Uh, I've talked about menus and the touch screen seems like a half-hearted attempt, but they're minor things. The camera takes beautiful photos and it gets you what a camera is supposed to get you. Shots quickly, when you want them, and how you want them. I think the cost is justified. I mean, the Leica Q feels like it belongs to the Leica family. And yet, still way cheaper than M-Series camera. You'd be happy to carry this around on the side of you. And you know, compared to something like the Sony RX1, which is the only other camera that kind of charted this territory with a full frame sensor, this is way more usable, way more enjoyable, and still delivers amazing photos. Talk to us about this camera on Twitter. Check out the photos that we have on Instagram. And of course, subscribe and keep watching our videos. We'd appreciate that. We will see you soon.